<laughs> I know the rule. <laughs> I know the environment. Yeah. I know the actors. Yeah. I know the country. Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for stopping by. So my people, this is Neton Inge. This is after the suspension. My people, he's here to tell us more because according to him, he said that he needed to say a lot, but that chance was not given to him. And he said that he was ready for the suspension because he knows the rules in the Senate and also the decision he took in order to expose the corruption that is going on in the Senate. So let's just listen to him and I'll be right back. Yesterday, all over the news, the story about your suspension and before it, the story about what your discovery about uh, some of the whatever in the budget. Yeah. What is your reaction so far? Because that's why I say you're the hottest politician. I, I find this uh, really amazing and amusing mm. that uh, I'm the hottest political the property. Most hottest politician. Most politician. Yeah. Glory be to God. It's positive. Positively or negatively. Uh, this is politics. Mm. And uh, believe you me, there will be no progress in your nation if there are no diverse opinion, disagreement. Sure. And there is no, no one issue that everyone looks at it in, in, in a dimension. So you agree to agree. And everything we try to do is to the best of my knowledge in the interest of the nation and of the citizenry. Mm. I agree with that. It appears that um, um, your colleagues seem to have thrown you under the bus. Though you're not the first to be suspended in the Senate, but what is your reaction to your own case? But you know, I've been around for 17 years. I'm aware, sir. <laughs> and I believe I'm a parliamentarian, and uh, once a chamber takes a resolution, whether you like it or you don't, you abide by it. Mm. Believe you me, I have, I'm very comfortable, and I respect the decision of the Senate, but my own asking, colleagues. They are asking for your apology. Should you apologize now or tomorrow by writing that the next day, of course, by your rules, you should definitely come back to the red chamber? Nobody gave me any chance. To apologize, to apologize. in fact, as a matter of fact, I didn't even conclude my remarks. Having said that, okay. I don't think as this juncture, it is not a matter of guilt or not guilt. You have dished out a sanction against me, and you are my friends and colleagues and colleagues. And for your compatriots. And yeah. compatriots. Yeah. And I want to swear by my God, mm. I have no gross or grudge against the leadership of the Senate, the members of the Senate. I had come along that road some, several times, and they must have been comforted with the ideas and believe that I did what people said I did. Okay, you, you don't agree to that. What are the facts? What's really two, prompted two, this? Two, two, two things. Yes. That was a folded text to our platform. Which platform now? The Northern Senators platform. Which you chair? Which I chaired. Chaired? Purportedly, which I used to chair. Yeah, because we saw the resignation. Exactly. Later. Purportedly authored by me. And... I found that particular post maligning mm. my name, maligning the forum, and most importantly, dragging the name of the Senate president in a matter he knows nothing about. Mm. And believe me, when I saw that post, I looked back and said, Someone wanted me and the Senate President to have a rocky relationship. Because when I saw that text, I know it was authored for a political motivation. Truly, I didn't vote for Apabio as Senate President. And I have said this several times over. Uh, but immediately he became the Senate President. I became totally loyal to him. I argued with him. 
and you know you followed my proceedings yes. i hardly missed a chamber yes. Yes. chamber sessions yes and every time i attend chamber and i raise my hand he recognizes you a probably recognize me to the detriment of the relationship with others i'm not unaware to, in my presence a probably was challenged severally as why the issue priority over <laughs> priority and preference over me wow sometimes he gives them answers sometimes he laughed and sometimes he said we came a long way with ningi mm. and i thought is uh, is a uh, an experienced legislator that's why i call him mm. if there's anything i regret about in the entire proceedings is that collusion between the board of you between myself and apabio this i can tell you for free i have never ever attended a meeting in the name of anti apabio's meeting with anybody anywhere mm. outside or inside the country mm. and i am not pasting and i swear by allah nobody has ever consulted me mm. on the issue of apabio's presidency and the probability of changing him so the allegation from the senate leader that you plotted a civilian coup against the senate president and all that what was your reaction when to that? the senate leader spoke in the manner he spoke i was taken aback and my heart was really wrenched because if there is any one person <coughs> that brings me into the administration of the senate is senator bamidele open and if there's any one person that i can say that has brought stability to this to the right to chamber. the red chamber his capacity to mingle his ability to listen and his competence over the legislative matters and carrying people along mm. There's nobody like uh, Babidele Opemi. <laughs> and believe you me, yeah, it was this same post that probably made him to take, the position. to take that position. However, I don't feel injured personally about what he said. You don't? I will take a personal visit to him and have a, a session to explain to him your own side of the story. There is no side of the story. <laughs> the side of the story is what I told you. My own person. Nobody can use me. You've come of age for, a, for a hatchet job. Hmm. One side of my life is actually within the parliament. And uh, everybody understands where I come from. I'm a straightforward person. If I say this, whether it's good for me, I remain with it. If I say bad, I abstain myself from it. Okay. And I'm very sure. With the benefit of our hindsight, this is not a matter of north, uh, northern, northern south. south. That's what I was doing. And, 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 and truly speaking, I don't see the issues as matters of northern south. And when I had my interview in, in BBC, BBC. Yes. first I was speaking as a northerner. Second, I was speaking as an opposition member of... Of the Red Chamber. Of the Red Chamber. So these are two reasons yes. for saying what I said. Yes. How many times on the floor of the Senate, if you follow the proceedings, have I praised some certain aspect of Bola Tinubu's presidency? Mm. But that has been uh, covered in trying to project me as anti as an anti volatile person. person but by the way you are you are in the opposition it's already <laughs> out there being in the opposition you are anti the ruling party isn't it right when you have uh, your firm statements to state against the leadership what's wrong with that particularly what i what i said was uh, was never controverted exactly and are we running a one party for 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 democracy to flourish I, it's a, a, a very complex country like our own that to be subject on a one-line thought 
is dangerous and terribly counterproductive. I agree with that. And I believe anybody who wishes this country to remain a one-party country is doing a huge disservice to this country. Mm. And I, I believe going forward, people should wish away the thought that Nigeria will become a one-party state. Mm. It will not happen. It will not happen. It can't happen. Mm. People will come and express their opinion. That, that, that's great. And um, though uh, Senator Shehu Sani tweeted and said that uh, there are rules on written codes that must be observed when you're within the corridors of power. And if you do uh, go against that whatever you see, you take. And so <laughs> that's what is meted out to you now. Three months suspension. And you now wonder, is the attempt not targeted at the opposition to stifle the views of the opposition? No, 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 no. What uh, Sani said, there is a complete guide provided by the Senate rules. Probably he doesn't understand or he doesn't know. Am I complaining that I've been suspended? No, I'm not. Before the suspension, didn't I say it was coming? You said so. You granted an interview. I granted an interview. It was coming. I'm very, very experienced in this department. So you know the rules? I know the rules. You, know, you knew what you were up against. <laughs> I know the rules. <laughs> I know the environment. Yes. I know the actors. Yes. I know the country. I have it. Okay. No grudge. Okay. Before we go on break, is there anything you want to highlight possibly about what transpired and all of it? Is there anybody that you think is particularly behind what you're going through right now in the Senate? I would like to believe I knew what I was going on in trying to have a different opinion about a, a fairly average stand of an ordinary Nigerian uh, who, for what reason or the other, fears to criticize, not because there, are, there is no basis for criticism, fears to criticize because of his personal safety, mm. fears to criticize because of what happens to him tomorrow. Mm. Politically. Politically, uh, that means being seen as a radical, and therefore you must be silenced. Mm. However, people forget where, we come, where, where I'm coming from. You were a living witness. You are in the National Assembly. Yes. When I was the leader of the House, yes. and there was this issue of that time, I was the leader. Ordinarily, the third time is coming from the PDP point of view. And I stood up as a leader. I was supposed to be Who's the chief party? campaign manager yes. of that particular program. My colleagues will bear me witness. I stood against all odds, against all threats. And at that time, the president of this country, Bola Chinu, was helping us in making sure that that didn't sell that true. Didn't, that didn't sell true. He was governor then. He was a governor of Lagos. Atiku Abubakar, Senator Akume, uh, Senator Uzo Kalu. It was point line people who were trying to encourage us to come together and blocked it. So when you see me doing what I'm doing, it's not new to me. Okay. It, it's not new. I just know, as a matter of fact, I'm in my early 60s. My concern. Is at, at this juncture, I'm not looking for a house, no a car, no a wife. I'm trying to think of tomorrow. What am I leaving as a legacy on my name for my kids, for my constituents? For fatherland. And for fatherland. Let's now bring it to building our nation. What are those things required from politicians to get Nigeria out of the woods? Because there is hunger in the land. While the distinguished senators are discussing huge amounts of money captured for one project or the other, that sometimes or most times the constituents don't get to see them. What 
is our problem with leadership in Nigeria? First of all, let me add, I'm not a saint. Hmm. Nobody I, is. <laughs> no, but I don't know. But me, I'm not a saint. <laughs> I must have done one thing or the other that is, that is abnormal and probably unbecoming. Hmm. But why I think <clears throat> that's fundamentally wrong with that is first two things. Believe and love. Believe. Uh, we do not believe in Nigeria. A lot of us do not believe in the concept of the Nigerian problem. of the Nigerian nation as a political entity with identifiable goals, hmm. with a vision. Secondly, even if we like Nigeria, we do not love Nigeria back. In the sense, a number of us, elites, make mouth of just loving Nigeria. Because if you love Nigeria, the most possibilities for you is to bring everybody on board with a view of collecting our various destinies for our collective, for our collective interest. interest. The first thing that has been disturbing me in all my life is the issue of who is a Nigerian and how are Nigerians define themselves. Which one comes first? Is it your ethnic background? Is it your religious biases? Is it your regional biases? I'm having a serious conflict. Why? People define, when you go around the country, mm. people define themselves first and foremost in order of priority. Mm. First as Evos, or Hausa, Hausas, Yorubas, Yorubas Fulanis, Christians, Muslim, Fulanis, Ibibios. Distinguished. The, the politicians are the ones who bring in those bacchanizing mechanisms. Isn't it true? Because very, 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 very true. So, very, very true. So very, very, we, very, very true. And, and that's why I take it in my mind. I will never define you because of your ethnic background or religious affiliation i will define you as an individual and that is what you must give glory and uh, tribute to alaji atiku mm. i've been with him for several and i've taken time try to reason why he has come a long way he never defines you by your religion mm. by your tribe by your ethnic background he defines you as the way you are. And that is one thing I'm trying to also imbibe. imbibe. And I think uh, a lot of Nigerians must reflect on the global village and see why we are different, why we are where we are. Okay. So since you have brought in the politics of mentioning Alaji Atiku Bakar and, uh, of course, what played out in 2023, your party, the PDP, uh, what is the situation? What's the challenge with the party? Because is it that the party's mistake has made in 2022 during the primaries by not upholding the party's constitution? Is it what is making this party more like a lame duck right, right, right now? I don't think, I, maybe it's a factor. By my opinion, the most fundamental thing is that people like to ride on the party and get whatever thing they get without giving back to the, party. to the party. People don't love this party. People like, because of the populist uh, attraction of the party, they see it as a vehicle. Formidable one at that. A formidable vehicle to come. Because otherwise, uh, Dixon, having been in power for 16 years, yeah. there's no reason, there's no human reason whatever, whatsoever, that that party is in a position as it is. Mm. And I am praying that the Nigerian people are not getting an alternative to your party, to my party, to the ruling party, a, a, a vehicle that will, Nigerians will believe in. Mm. So, so but you know, I'm 
a PDP member. I wouldn't like to say for life. I'm by seeing, I'm seeing myself just PDP. Have you ever left PDP? Right? I've never left PDP. The, the language, did your party make a mistake in 2023, in your view? Because if your party upheld your constitution, you talked about giving back to the party. How do you give back to a party that does not reward loyalty? If the constitution of your party well captures rotational arrangement within the blocks, what's wrong with upholding it? Do you think your party made a mistake? I don't think it's wrong as simplistic as uh, rotation within blocks. Within I want those regions, I mean. within with the regions, I want those people oh, so who who argued against that particular definition because I said you want to rotate political positions within block, and we, I throw the the, the, the issue of. For how many years, in the last in the 16 years, had a northerner ruled the country mm. and stay as a president of the country? On the country. Mm. And for how many years? The southerner. The southerner had. Mm. It is not about that rotation. It is about personal capacity of the individual. Of the individual and the possibilities of somebody who could win an election for us. At that material time, my check would have been, we have been out of power for eight years. Get the best materials. And win the power first. And win the power. <laughs> and then come back again. Well, looking back now, do you, think, looking back, do you think that was a mistake? Because um, I think that was a mistake. It was a mistake. That was a mistake. And unfortunately, we shot ourselves on the foot. Mm. And the APC saw the loophole. And grabbed it and ran and with grabbed it. it. <laughs> and, and having said, having, having also said that, I believe yeah. our votes were not counted for us. I strongly believe that mm -hmm. Chukwu was not counted for him as he should. Yeah, we, 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 we've moved and that is a story for another day. Yes, twenty twenty seven is by the corner. Just already because I believe that politicians are already plotting. In case you don't know. The argument, as was raised by the Senate leader there, is also get towards the direction of 2027 and all that. What is your party looking towards as you move towards 2027? Uh, the aspect of major with other political parties, the, those who left the party, the likes of Konkoso who left, the likes of Pito B who left, and a few others who left. Is there anything that you think your party should do to possibly have a chance in 2027 election? First of all, I want my party to... to to recognize and believe that the party has a debt to its history. Mm. The party has a history of its own. The, uh, the founders of this party did not form that party in vain, and they should not allow their dream, which they have not actually benefited from, mm. to just above French because of our personal interest. I believe Maja is a strong, strong possibility. I will not go into a Maja from a position of weakness. I want every member of the party who still feels for the party to come back to the party and then ask others to join us for a Maja, to confront whatever we can confront. I believe the PDP is not strong enough as it is, as it is constituted mm. to enter into a merger. We must just try to, f to forgive and forget. We have devoured ourselves. We have <laughs> insulted ourselves. Mm. We have injured ourselves. Mm. And endangered the nation, so to say. Yeah, in the process, <laughs> endang uh, endangered the nation. Mm. Now, those that are ripping it are, of course, members of the APC. Even though they do have their own case. But I'm not a member, so I don't go into it. <laughs> okay. I'll just summarize uh, distinguished with asking you, should the leadership of the Senate be watching now? And you have something to say in summary to all that has played out and all that. What do you think that will be? Now, all that uh, has played out is democracy in action. People have the right to say. And people also have the right uh, of way. The majority have the right of way. The minority should have the right of say. Freedom of expression. That is my take. Allow people to express. It's fundamental human right. It's a fundamental human right. Are you going to apologize to your leadership? In this we have not come to that. I'm, uh, I'm suspended 
So, no issue about that. I'm mm. suspended, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. So, my people, as you can see, Senator Ningi is unbothered about the suspension. Like, he's supposed to be the Senate man of the year, and he should be commended for speaking truth to the power, because a lot of uh, Nigerians, they are really standing by him, yes. Because this is the only senator that we have seen that can come out and tell us what is really going on there, all the abracataba they are doing in there. And also, he has made Nigerians to wake up to look into 2024 budget to truly see or know if there is any budget pending. And my people, guess what? Nigerians are finding a lot of things in 2024 budget. Hey, according to Peter B, he said that suspending Senate Onigi did not address 2024 budget pending. And Senate Ningi have said it already that he's going to say more. So let's keep waiting because we are going to hear more. Let me just leave you guys to my next one. And if today is your first time, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye-bye for now.